In this video, we'll be taking up the second sheet, uh, second homework sheet on um, solving trig equations. These questions are, I would argue, quite a bit harder than the other ones uh, on the page. Uh, they just involve some more complicated identities, especially the ones in question four. But they're very good practice um, for the test. Okay, so for question one, two, and three, they actually have something in common. They all have a restriction on what uh, the angle can be. And I made a typo, it says theta here, but obviously I meant x. Um, and when I did the question, I actually missed something. I didn't notice that for question four, x can be any real number. I thought it was still between or from zero to two pi, and I actually had to redo it. So you'll see um, that I have some questions that yeah, I had to make some changes to some answers in question four, but um, I actually prefer answer or prefer questions where there are no restrictions because then you have to play with co-terminal angles, you have to reject the roots and so forth and so on. Uh, so number four is great practice. If you can get all of four correct, then uh, you're in good shape. Okay, so let's start with number one. So for question one, uh, there's not really much to say about it. So for some of them, I'll just, sh just show you the solutions, but I won't go over them. So 1, A, B, and C, very straightforward, not much to say. Uh, just your exact values. Uh, for D, you're basically factoring a quadratic. Uh, cos x can't be 3. Uh, I talked about that in the lesson. Uh, if cos x equals half, you're looking at quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. E, you have to apply the co... Um, Pythagorean identity, cos squared x is 1 minus sine squared x. Create your quadratic factor, and then solve. Uh, F is same thing, quadratic, nothing fancy. For G, be careful, square both sides, you get plus minus 1. I wrote the solutions the long way, but uh, you can write the shortcut. So for example, you can write pi over 4 plus pi over 2k and give a restriction on k. Uh, but what I wrote here is fine as well. So all four quadrants because the ratio is plus and minus. Uh, H, not much to say. Um, Pythagorean identity, factor, and then find the ratios, or find the angles, sorry. Uh, I, Pythagorean identity. Uh, J is set it equal to zero, and then common factor cos x. Uh, please don't divide both sides by cos x because you will lose the solutions of pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Uh, okay, so that's for all for question one. For number two, uh, same thing basically. Number two, we are common factoring tan. Tan x equals four, you need a calculator. Four is not one of our friendly ratios. Uh, and then for b, you're um, basically a complex trinomial factor and then solve for the angles. Okay, and for all the questions on the sheet, um, you can check your solutions. Sub it back into the original equation if you're doubtful. Okay, so that's one and two. Oh, I forgot to mention, this sheet is pretty, uh, pretty long. So if it took you about an hour, that's actually not bad of a time frame we're looking at. Okay. So for question three, uh, basically it's a factor by grouping. 3a and 3b is factor by grouping. Um... Get the ratios, solve for the angles. For four, four is when we're getting interesting. Okay, so I would argue 4a, 4b, 4c, 4d are very similar questions. You basically have the same strategy, you square both sides. So be careful. Now, when you square both sides, you introduce extraneous roots. Okay, so what does that mean? You're introducing solutions that aren't really solutions. So um, if you do the math, you get pi over, pi over 12 plus k pi and five pi over 12 plus k pi. But be careful because um, you have to let k be an even number because if k was odd, like if you let k equal one here, you get 13 pi over 12 and that, if you check, it's, it's an extraneous root. So you could say, let k be um, an even integer um, or just write what I did here. So let pi over 12 plus 2k pi. 
and 5 pi over 12 plus 2k pi. Uh, so be careful. When you square both sides, you should most definitely check for extraneous roots because when you square both sides, it's very common to uh, introduce roots that weren't really roots. And I talked about that in the lesson. So that's for uh, 4b. So you can tell infinite solutions because uh, the x is no longer strictly between or from 0 to 2 pi. So infinite solutions, infinite solutions. Be careful, extraneous, extraneous roots everywhere. Okay. So actually, now I'm curious. Does this actually work? Because I, I fixed the um, answers very quickly. So now I'm curious. Does this work? Uh, 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. That will give me negative. Let's check. If it's cosine 2 pi over 3. And you know what? Let's check use our calculator. Okay, so I'm going to sub in 2 pi over 3 uh, into the original equation. So. And minus one over nine answer. Ooh, so I checked, and two pi over three is actually an extraneous root. Two pi, and that means we can't accept the coterminal angles. So let me quickly check. Yeah, that makes sense. Two pi over three is in quadrant two. Yeah, that doesn't work out. So I'm going to check four pi over three. And very quickly. So 1 divided by 10 of that minus 1 over sine of that. So this 4 power 3 is good. So you know what? Good thing we checked. So it's just x equals 4 power 3 plus 2k pi. Any angle coterminal to 4 power 3 is going to be a great answer. Ooh, that was close. So always check. When you square both sides, you, you really have to be careful. You know what, I won't erase it. I'm just gonna leave it there and then I'm gonna highlight that as extraneous. So that's an extraneous rune. All right, okay, let's check D. Uh, I believe I checked these and they worked. So you can check them again. But check 0.45 and check 1.13. Okay, what else we got? E, I didn't have to reject anything because I didn't square both sides and uh, yeah, these solutions work out. And I noticed there was a pattern here. What you could have done was instead of saying pi over 3 plus 2, like quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4 and their respective coterminal angles, what you could have done is pi over 3 plus k pi because you have pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3 and you have 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. These angles are separated by pi and these angles are separated by pi. So there was actually a more concise way of writing the solution. Um, I just didn't do it because like I said I actually missed the restriction on x but if someone wrote this to me I would have accepted it as a solution on the test. Okay so f, uh, let's see just some basic identities Pythagorean identity, and then simplify, you get sine x equals plus minus root 3 over 2. So this one I simplified. I went quadrant 1 and 3, 2 and 4. Okay, so k pi instead of 2k pi for coterminal. All right. But if you did quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4, and the respective coterminal angles, I would have accepted that. All right, so let's look. 4, 4g. Four okay. Yeah, this is pretty long. Okay, so 4G, uh, Pythagorean identity, quadratic, factor, factor. Um, yeah, just be careful. It's going to end up being 4K pi because it's X over 2, which means the period is 4 pi instead of 2 pi. H I really like because it requires you to use your compound angles. Um, yep, and you have K pi over 3. Okay. Uh, k pi makes sense because that was what we learned when we first studied the sine function and we asked what are the zeros of the sine function. 
Okay, uh, I, I like this one too, compound angle, um, subtraction formula for cosine, and it, it works out beautifully. I like this one. I also like the, the cos, I don't like giving you cos x, I like it when it's like cos 4x, cos 3x, because it really forces you to build a relationship between equations and trig functions. Um, because if you can visualize it, you'll understand why there are there are more solutions on a given interval. Okay, uh, J double angle formula, I love that. Uh, but then you get something like a quadratic. So those identities, you, you have to memorize them. Okay, K, oh, square both sides, so be careful. You're gonna introduce extraneous roots. So you can check these two, but they should check out. L, oh, square both sides again. Yep, simplify and square both sides. Yeah, it's a very powerful technique, but it just be very careful because you will um, introduce extraneous roots. So, yeah, so for example, you you have uh, odd multiple of pi over two, but you actually end up only accepting pi over two and their respective co-terminal angles. Okay, uh, this one, not much to say. Co-function identity. Tan is pi, k pi, because tan has a period of of pi instead of two pi. So tan is actually the easiest to work with. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. What do we have here? N co-function identity. O. Um, Pythagorean identity, simplify. Uh, yep. I wrote a fan I had a fancy way of expressing the solutions for this uh, equation, but if you wrote it differently, as long as the solutions match up, then we're good. Okay. P is by far my favorite because you need to use the triple angle formula for tan. And if you don't know the triple angle formula for tan, no problem, just derive it. Uh, using the comp using the double angle and compound angle formula for tan um, yeah just a bunch of simplifying and then you get uh, uh, cortic but you can treat it as a quadratic and basically it even though it's cortic it's a simple trinomial and then factor factor ooh beautiful ratios it worked out beautifully yep then the, yep the, First, basically quadrant one, two, three, four, quadrant one, two, three, four. So there's a lot of solutions here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's not, you know what? Uh, just look at the solutions and you'll realize why it's k pi over two, because they're 90 degrees apart, these solutions. So you can actually write it very simply. Uh, this is very similar to one of the questions on our uh, solving trick equations handout. Anyways, that was a very long sheet, but it was really worth it because uh, it's really reinforcing all the special angles and all the basic algebra and the identities. So it's a really good review for a lot of the trigonometry we did in this course. Okay, so uh, one more lesson and we are done for the unit.